Okay guys, it is well and truly spring now. The days are longer than the nights, but there's a lot going on in the night sky as we transition from the winter night sky to the summer night sky. So here's a quick summary. If you face west after sunset, you'll see the winter Milky Way arching across the sky. There are plenty of bright stars in that area, particularly the winter circle of stars. So constellations like Orion, Gemini, you've got Sirius of Canis Major, and you'll also have Mars in the evening skies as well. And underneath the arching Milky Way, you should also be able to see the zodiacal light. Now, as the night goes on and they begin to set, if you face north, you'll see the bright stars Capella as well as Vega, and the Cygnus region of the Milky Way rising into the northwest. It's one of my favorite regions of the Milky Way. And then as we go into the pre-dawn hours, everybody's favorite part of the Milky Way, the galactic core starts to rise in the southeast, and it's joined by a foray of planets as well. There's also a meteor shower this month, guys, so lots of stuff to look out for, and I'll go into more detail after this intro. Okay, guys, before I go into detail about the night sky this month, I just want to give a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes, and there are even a number of courses in astrophotography and astronomy. After last month's video, a lot of you guys tried out the course on Nightscapes, which was put together by Ian Norman. This course is great for beginners. It covers all the foundations you need for landscape astrophotography. But there's also a good in-depth two-part course run by Paul Ganner. He also goes into detail about post-processing, so things like how to blend a sky with a foreground, things that will take your photos to the next level. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to all the courses. It's super affordable, and annual subscription works out at less than 10 dollars a month so roughly six pound fifty for those of us in the uk now last month we promised two months free premium membership to the first 500 of my followers to use the link in the description below there are still some of those places left so make sure to click that link and use that to sign up and get two months free premium membership and thanks again to skillshare for sponsoring another video and allowing me to create free and useful content for you guys all right guys now the night sky this month is quite interesting there's stuff going on all the way through the night so just after sunset facing west you'll see the winter milky way arching across the night sky and there's lots of bright stars there because of course you are looking into the galactic plane you're looking into the milky way so there's lots of bright stars there familiar ones like orion and gemini sirius the brightest star in the night sky those bright stars are also joined by Mars, which is still pretty close to Pleiades in the night sky. It sets at about midnight and it fades over the course of the month from magnitude plus 1.4 to plus 1.6. Now also underneath the arch of the Milky Way, you should see a triangular diffuse glow of light called the zodiacal light. It should stay around for a couple of hours uh, after darkness falls and it will be right in the direction where the sun had set a couple of hours before. And as you can see in this image, you'll see the triangular glow underneath pretty much the arch of the Milky Way. It is fairly faint as well, so you wanna make sure that there's no light pollution in the west of your location. As the night goes on, all of those lovely winter objects will set in the west. And if you face north at about 1 a.m., you will see two bright stars, Capella and Vega. And also the Cygnus region of the Milky Way rising into the northwest. This is one of my favorite regions of the Milky Way. It's quite bright. It's quite detailed. It gets nice and high in the night sky, which is better to photograph compared to low on the horizon. And it's also home to the North American Nebula. So there's a nice little bit of pink color in there from the Hydrogen Alpha Emission Nebula as well. So it's a really nice, bright, colorful part of the Milky Way that perhaps doesn't get as much attention as the galactic core. Speaking of which, in the pre-dawn hours, the Milky Way will rise into the southeast at about 4 a.m. The best time to photograph the Milky Way core will be about 4.30 a.m., which is the onset of astronomical twilight, just as things start getting bright. So shooting at about 4.30 a.m. means the Milky Way has got up as high as it can before the night starts getting bright again. The Milky Way window, or the Milky Way core window for this month, is from about the 1st to the 15th, so the good 
fortnight, the first two weeks of the month are pretty good for getting the Milky Way in those pre-dawn hours. Now, as I mentioned, the Milky Way core is also joined by a foray of planets, Jupiter being the first to rise at about 1 a.m. and a nice bright magnitude of minus 2.3, so shining pretty bright. That's followed by Saturn, which is only shining at plus 0.5, and that rises at about 3 a.m. And if the eastern horizon is nice and clear just before sunrise, you should be able to catch a glimpse of the bright minus 3.9 Venus, which rises at about 5 a.m. shortly before the sun. Mercury reaches greatest western elongation on the 11th of April. So after that date, you've got a good chance of spotting it just below Venus, as long as the horizon is nice and clear. As for conjunctions this month, there's a good opportunity to get a crescent moon with Venus on the 1st and the 2nd of the month. This will be facing east just before sunrise. But my favorite conjunction is on the 9th. So if you face west, you'll be able to see the moon sitting just above Aldebaran, the bright star in Taurus. And to the right, you will also see Mars and a little bit further along the open star cluster Pleiades. So a really nice gathering of, of different night sky objects there and also a good mix of color. You've got the orange of Mars, the sort of yellow orangey tinge of Aldebaran, the uh, beautiful blue color in Pleiades, the open star cluster, and the moon, of course, you will see transition from white to orange and red as it sets below the horizon. Now there is a meteor shower this month guys, the Lyrids meteor shower is active from about the 16th to the 25th and it peaks on the night of the 22nd and the 23rd and the rates can be about 10 to 20 an hour for an exceptionally dark place when the, the radiant point of the meteor shower is directly overhead so not that high rates. And this year, the, the peak, which is on the 22nd and the 23rd, coincides with a pretty big gibbous moon, which is going to wash out all but the brightest meteors. So it's pretty difficult to get excited for this meteor shower, but be aware, it is a bit active up there. And over that fortnight, you may be lucky to catch a couple of meteors. However, as the sun now takes a little bit longer to drop below the horizon as we go into these summer months, there'll be some good opportunities to get the International Space Station. So the International Space Station, as it flies over the night sky, catches the light of the sun and makes it appear like a sort of moving star in the night sky. And because the sun takes a bit longer to set below the horizon, we get more chances and more opportunities to see the International Space Station cross in the sky. So make sure to download the app ISS Detector uh, and keep an eye on the flyovers for your location because it will massively change depending on where you are in the world. And just keep an eye on that app and you might find some good opportunities this month. And that's about all I've got for you this month, guys. There's a nice transition from winter night sky to summer night sky. So lots of different subjects to go after this month. There's something to do at all times of night this month as well. So anyway, onto the hashtag Wittens. Last month, I wanted to see how many of you guys were crazy enough to get up at three o'clock in the morning, get out there and photograph the Milky Way and yeah, huge respect. You're all crazy. I love it. There are so many good entries this month. I actually struggled to pick my favorite three this month. And of course, I was checking the planets that were visible in your Milky Way shots to make sure that they were taken this month. But some really, really awesome entries. So in no particular order, this one from J Rivas 572 is a gorgeous capture of the Milky Way in Malibu, California, uh, and some really nice flowers in the foreground there. So it's a good opportunity this time of year in spring to get flowers with the night sky, that wicked combination of, of nature. They look like foxgloves to me, but I'm not 100% sure what they are. I'm no botanist, but yeah, beautiful image. Uh, we have this amazing image from Eduardo in Brazil. The Milky Way nice and high in the night sky, wicked vantage point from the uh, the southern hemisphere there and I love the colors in this image that Milky Way the colors of the Milky Way look spot on and the lack of noise in this image just makes it a real pleasure to enjoy I'd love to see this image uh, in a bit of a larger format compared to to Instagram 
Lastly then, I really love this image from Alexandre. I'm not going to try and pronounce your surname, I'm sorry. But a really nice atmospheric capture in a snowy Switzerland. And I really love this sort of gorgeous pastel colour palette going on the image. It just kind of adds to the serenity of it. And that thin high cloud just causing the bright stars to glow and bloat. And in particular, Jupiter there, really big and bright in front of the, the dark horse nebula. So that is a really international mix of images this month guys it's absolutely crazy how this little series on youtube is being watched by people all over the world but of course we're all sharing the same milky way the same planets the same moon so it's amazing to see how people all over the world are capturing it with their landscapes and what their country has to offer so pretty overwhelmed guys this is like it's amazing Thank you all for participating. We're nearly on 4,000 images now on the Wittens hashtags and the feedback for this Wittens series has just been really, really heartwarming. So sticking with this theme, people around the world and all this stuff, I want to see pictures this month of you guys in the field working, maybe, you know, a, a portrait of you with your camera and the stars and the landscape, or maybe just a little stick figure in the distance on a mountain with the Milky Way. Um, or perhaps watch my Milky Way selfies video, get a little bit of inspiration from there. I just want to see pictures of you guys in your landscape under the stars uh, and just, you know, doing astrophotography, having a good time, enjoying the night sky and let's see what you come up with. Anyway, that is it for this month, guys. Please share this video anywhere you think anyone might find it useful. Um, the more, the better. I love getting you guys participating and involved. If you are going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Mm -hmm.